You ever feel like sometimes things just snowball out of control? Well, welcome to my own personal avalanche. Hey, welcome back. Well, the day has finally come. I gotta address some major things on Gilligan here. Um, yeah, two different trips under the belt so far, and I've accumulated lots and lots of repairs and damage from these last two trips. And I've been, we've had a lot going on here at the house, a lot of things going on. So had to put things off for a while, but now I'm finally ready to get back at this. So let me show you, let me show you what's gotten out of control here. So let's take a peek here real quick. So the first thing that I need to address on the truck, I was having issues while we were down south in uh, Tennessee and Kentucky. The brakes in the truck are terrible. When it's in four low, um, there are basically, I have to throw a neutral to hold the truck still when it's in four low. I think the addition of the, the new tires and a brake system that was, you know, adequate at best to begin with, well, now it's time to upgrade. And fortunate for me, when I was down south, as you saw in the one video, we met with Mike Duff. And what we came up with is a brake upgrade kit here that's basically designed for uh, early Broncos. But we're going to figure out a way to make it work on this truck. So what Mike set me up with is their nice premium master cylinder. I believe this is an inch and an eighth bore compared to the point nine inch bore that I have currently. Uh, we have a adjustable proportioning valve, the mounting bracket for that as well. We have all braided brake hose kits for the truck. I'm also going to be changing the bushings for the upper ball joints for a little more caster. Uh, the kit came with hardware for the caliper. This is header wrap for uh, another issue. New brake pads, and here are the Ford Thunderbird style calipers. These are 73 millimeter, I do believe. Those are the part numbers there. So that's what's going to be going on Gilligan right now. Um, there may be a small issue with the way this master cylinder bolts, I'm sorry, the master cylinder bolts of the booster here. I may have to do a little bit of grinding on the new one for it to fit inside this little pocket here. Not too big of a deal, but I'll figure that out. Um, I also, while we were at Silver Lake Sand Dunes, uh, we, we aired it out a little bit here, and I ended up crushing the airline for the front locker, and I also stuffed the front axle into the Y-pipe, so the exhaust is crushed. So I have to readjust my bump stops, fix the Y-pipe on the truck. And while we were there also, the oil line blew off the uh, engine for the oil relocation kit, so this whole side of the truck got hosed down with synthetic motor oil and the hose shot right at that brake. So there is no brakes on this side of the truck basically. So I needed to upgrade and fix all this anyway. So it was a perfect timing for all the duff parts. So that is project one. So project number two leads me to the steering. Yep, if you look back a couple videos, you'll see how just recently I went and upgraded, put all new tie rods, um, just rebuilt everything down here, did the tie rod flip to the top of the knuckles, reamed all that out. Well, guess what? It all gets get replaced again. <laughs> um, down in uh, down in Windrock, uh, it had a big problem with the steering on the truck. When the front locker is locked in, and you're sitting on some rocks or whatever where both tires have equal traction, you can't turn the truck. You basically have to turn off the air locker, which thank God I put an air locker in it, so it's just a matter of flipping a toggle switch. But you can unlock the front end, make your maneuver, then relock it in. You know, we worked around it for a week. It was a pain in the butt. But the uh, harsh reality is it's time to upgrade this to Hydro Assist. So what I'm doing right now is basically I am re-engineering the entire steering system on the truck. Um, fortunately, um, I have the Wild Horse's 
uh, track bar riser kit, which is going to play into this pretty well here. I'm going to be able to move my track bar up one more hole. Glad I didn't cut that off. And what I thought I was going to be able to use here, what I'd already had, some high steer knuckles for these F-150 knuckles. But the more I read online, these are th these have been machined, they're, they're tapped. I had some custom uh, steering arms made for these a long time ago. But from what I'm reading online, these are not the safest ones to use. You do eliminate a lot of meat, and there's not a lot of thread engagement on the bolts for the high steer arms. So I ordered a brand new set of reed knuckles. It should be here in a day or so. So we're going to convert this from a Y-link to a crossover type steering. So over on that knuckle there, there'll be a, a seven inch long high steer arm, which will allow me to raise that drag link up to that, get it out of the way. And I'm also going to try to use, now bear in mind, this is early in the video in who knows, three and a half minutes. The next thing I might say might completely change. I don't know yet, but as of right now on paper, it looks like I'm going to try to use the rough stuff or the rough stuff engineering um, offset tie rod kit. So I'm going to still have one ton tie rods, but I'm going to use their one inch offset. What that's going to do is give me a lot more room here between the tie rod and the axle to mount this PSE steering assist ram. So what I did was I bought a kit from Wild Horses. They have a really good deal. And these PSC Rams, they have eight inches of travel, which I will limit it down to seven for this truck, so it's perfect. Um, probably gonna end up mounting this end near where the track bar bracket is on the axle housing. And then this end will get mounted to the tie rod using this ballistic fab tube clamp. So no bolt hole in these. What we'll end up doing is more than likely welding tabs onto it for a double shear mount. Here are those. These are not the high steer arms I'm going to use. These are ones specifically made for this half ton Dana 44 F-150 knuckles that I'm not going to use. So uh, we'll have the new ones here in a day or so. But also got the Wild Horses, the hose kit for it. So we're gonna be doing all of that as well. So down here under the truck, before we went to Silver Lake Sand Dunes, I actually redid the exhaust and header wrapped the whole thing, which made a huge difference on the interior of the truck. Um, people were barefooted inside the truck on the passenger side and there were no issues with heat coming through the floor now. But as you can see, I did have a problem where to get a little carried away, jumping it in the dunes and I ended up stuffing the axle up. The yoke came up and basically punched the Y pipe right there. So I'm going to have to uh, build a, move this Y pipe and do it a little bit differently. And then also I have to drop down my bumps a little bit more to uh, stop it from going that far. So got to address that. That's got to be fixed. And I think I'm going to redo the exhaust. Currently now there's no tailpipe, but I do think I want to add a tailpipe back to it. So just to uh, get it ready for the dunes, the exhaust I did just basically had a turn down before the axle with a new smaller Flowmaster XF series muffler. Love the way it sounds. Um, it is a little loud inside the truck now with just a turn down. So I think I'm gonna add a tailpipe back to it. And also you can see I added a Dorelli remote uh, trans cooler with a built-in fan. It's on its own thermostat control switch up there. That made a huge difference also with the sand dunes, uh, my training temps. I never saw over 180 degrees in, in four days. So that's awesome. That worked really well. And a nice clean place to put it up there on the bottom of the floor. Ran some new lines and as a bonus, I ended up gaining about a quart of extra fluid capacity, which is always good for a C4. So that right there is current status on the truck. I have a bunch of other just small little things I need to do while I'm in doing all this other stuff. So let's get started. I think I'm gonna tear into the brake system first since I'm still waiting on some of the steering parts. So let's go, get going on it. All right, so here's the reed knuckles. I just picked them up from my buddy's machine shop and I had him drill the tie rod ends out straight through to seven eighths. So I'm using a tapered insert so I'll be able to run the tie rod on the top of the knuckles. Got that done. Got all new studs and nuts for the spindles. 
There's all the hardware for the high steer arm and ball joints are in. So these are basically ready to install. So uh, yeah, there we go. All right, on this side, I got the first reed knuckle on. Took it over, dropped it off my buddy John's shop. He drilled these straight through. So now I have the tapered inserts. So I can do the tie rod flip. Ball joints are all in, studs pressed in, Loctited. I have a one degree uh, bushings up here for the top ball joint. At my line, it was off a little bit. The top of the tires were kind of tipped out a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and lean them in. One degree, that should take care of that. So here is the high steer arm. Sits down on there like so. And then you have some uh, tapered cones that will go in there and some lock nuts. So that there is going to be the new connection to the, the drag link to the steering box, which I didn't film it, but I also have my uh, blue top steering box back in. It's been all freshened up, rebuilt, and been drilled and tapped for the hydro assist. So that's done too. So, move it along pretty good so far. Let me get the other side on now. All right, for the spindles, what I'm going to do is I got these replacement bushings from Wild Horses. They're like a, a nylon type bushing. What they're going to do is they're going to go in, they're going to replace this needle bearing right here. Problem with these RCV shafts is they don't accept the stock style seals on the uh, stub shaft to uh, keep all the crap out of there. So I've trashed a lot of these, probably three sets since I've had the truck together because of water and dirt and stuff getting in there. It contaminates everything and they just get all jacked up. These have only been in there since we went to Tennessee. They're not destroyed yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this chance to pop those out and put in these. And it should be the last time I ever have to worry about them. They fit a lot tighter around the axle shaft. So it's a lot harder for stuff to get past them and get into the hub. So I'm going to go ahead and knock those out, press this in. All right, after uh, much head scratching and sitting around staring at things a while, I finally have the hydro assist ram stuff all figured out here. So we have new links made for tie rod and the drag link. Then right here. Everything just tacked in place for now. Right there on the Wild Horses track bar bracket, the riser one, was able to move the track bar to the top bolt hole. All my angles are really good still, and got just enough room for my mounting tabs there. I just gotta finish welding all those in. And then down here, with the traditional tubing clamp, it's gotta get that all welded in, so. Everything looks really good. Lots of clearance, cycled it through, full articulation both sides. Lock to lock, and only thing that actually interferes is right here. The threads on the bottom of this tie rod I'm going to have to uh, shorten up, and I'm actually going to put a lock nut on it. I won't be able to use a castle nut with a cotter pin, so it'll get a lock nut, just like what's on the uh, steering ram heim, so not a big deal. But that was literally the uh, only interference was right there, so we're looking good here. And again, from this side, these offset tie rods really made a big difference. There's no way I would have had the room to get the uh, the clamp in there and the steering ram. So it all looks pretty good right there. Very happy with it. When it goes to full compression on this side, this tucks up real nicely right in between the track bar and the pitman arm. We have no uh, interference there. We have just enough room. So it looks like, I can't believe it, it's all going to work fairly well. So I just got to pull everything apart and finish welding up all my links and the tabs and then go ahead and tighten everything down. So we're looking good. And here's all the links. Everything's all welded up, painted, ready to go back on the truck. Here's the tubing clamp. This will get bolted. Got the tabs welded inside and out. That will go clamped onto there. 
and on the axle there is the other end of the ram mount and then what i ended up doing was the upper i'm sorry the track bar bolt that goes on that bracket i ended up welding a thinner nut on the back side there because there is some interference with the coil spring in the way so now i can just run a bolt right through the front of that tighten it up and then the bolt i'll trim just shy of uh, sticking out of the back side of that nut so that should clear the coil so you have no problems with that now i don't have to worry about trying to get a wrench back in there between the coil and that bracket to keep that bolt tight which was impossible so that should fix that problem so one of the other places of interference this truck had was with this track bar bolt it was much longer and had a real big thick um, nylon locking nut on it and it would actually hit the coil right here there was uh interference right there and it was recently on an off-road trip in hollerwood where another buddy he had a, a bolt rubbing on his coil and it actually broke it so i definitely don't want to do, to be in that position so i ended up taking a shallow nut welding it to the back side trimmed the excess of the bolt off and bolted it through the front so I think that's going to work pretty good for the track bar there. So that problem is fixed. Now to get the rest of this crap on here. So now that the front end's all back together, I got all the new uh, steering links and hydro assist all figured out. So now I'm just kind of get a ballpark figure on getting everything lined up. So what I'm using is these laser levels here, magnets right on the rotors. See, so projects the line on the floor. I used this when I first started. This line here, they were kicked way out. They were way out like this. So what I did was I straightened those with the um, adjusting the drag link to get the steering wheel straight until these were straight on the floor. So now I got my steering wheel straight. And now if you look at the two, that's my toe. Where they come together there, you can see how they don't line up. So the truck's towed out right now. So now I'm gonna adjust the tie rod, bring those lines so they line up together, and that'll at least get me at zero toe and I'll go from there. Here we go, I'm gonna adjust the tie rod. All I'm doing is twisting my link. And then you can see, there we go, lined up. So at least now I got the toe at zero. So I got the steering ram all mounted up here. Boy, uh, <laughs> everything is super tight. Got the ram in the middle of its travel. It's uh, It's got seven and three quarters inch travel. So we got her right in the center of its travel. Tubing clamp is on. I'm trying to figure out the best orientation for the hoses. And sticking straight up right in between the track bar and the drag link is looking like my best option when we cycle the steering wheel full left full right the uh it gets real tight the bar you know it moves in and it i mean i got a 16th of an inch gap on either side of the fittings it locked a lock so my only other option is to rotate the ram 90 degrees and put the fittings directly behind it um, i don't know if that's going to be a smart option i think i'm going to go with this i do like it but the fittings are going to be pretty protected from, uh, you know, sticks, logs, chunks of ice, whatever. So I think I'm going to go with this setup here. It's uh, pretty good. Now I just got to cut some hose lengths, put them together here, and we'll about have this done. Well, while putting the brakes together, I also discovered... These are the bigger uh, Thunderbird calipers that I got from James Duff for a brake upgrade. And what I found is these are too big for the reed knuckles. This spot right here is hitting the knuckle. So on this one here, I ground it all down smooth. I just test fit it and it still has some interference. So it looks like I'm gonna have to get in here and do a little bit of clearancing right here on the reed knuckle. Should be plenty of material there to do that. Uh, just another uh, 
unforeseen little hiccup. So I'm sure these with the smaller, the stock F-150 calipers would probably be fine. But with these bigger T-Bird calipers, we definitely got an interference. So but let's get this clearanced out. So I got the caliper to clear. Had the grind down the flat wheel, that portion of the knuckle. Then also had to take a little more off the caliper as well. Now it just barely clears and will slide. So we're going to use reed knuckles on a Dana 44 with the bigger 73 millimeter Thunderbird calipers. Definitely make note of this. But there we go. All fixed. I can put it together now. So the next thing we had to do, the master cylinder for the new uh, James Duff upgraded one, uh, the booster for early Bronco and Ranger Bronco 2s, this whole part is totally different. So the booster, or I'm sorry, the master as it comes does not fit. So we had to do some grinding on it to make clearance for it. So this is what we had to do. We had to take off a whole bunch of excess material here and also on the bottom. It's not pretty, but we'll hit it with some fresh paint and now it fits inside that recessed area. So it'll all bolt up flush. And then we had to adjust the push rod um, going by Mike's, Mike Duff's directions on how to set that. We use that. And basically we came up with- It ended up being two tenths of an inch longer. Two tenths of an inch. So we started at 3.815, ended up at 4.005. So that's what my push rod length started as, and that's what it is now to get the proper clearance. So everything works. We're gonna hit this with some, uh, put some fresh paint on it to cover that up, and we're gonna bolt it all up. All right, got the master cylinder all bolted in. Everything fits real good. The uh, little push rod's adjusted. Proportioning valve is in. Brakes are all bled. Brake hoses are a little long because, again, this kit's designed for an early Bronco. Master cylinder and, uh, booster setup's completely different, but it's going to work. Everything uh, turned out fine. I had to just uh, remake a couple brake lines here to adapt everything. So, uh, yeah, I already did one quick bleed with the uh, air bleeder. I'm going to get someone out here to do it the traditional way here, too, and put a heavy foot on that pedal. should help a little more. So that part's done. Pretty happy.